Good afternoon all out in Redeemer land and everyone uh, watching from elsewhere. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon as we celebrate our second Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes. And so as we celebrate our second Easter, the gospel reading for our second Easter is uh, Matthew's gospel, chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. Matthew's gospel, verses, uh, chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. Now after the, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I want us to, to really appreciate what we're being told in this Gospel reading. Because later on in the chapter, Jesus gives the command, the Great Commission, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, which is the Gospel reading last week. But as we're listening now, this is what precedes it. And as this precedes it, you know, listen to the message of the angels. The message of the angels to the women are this. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. And I want you to hear that because that's what we are all to be. You know, we're to be witnesses of Jesus, witnesses of his death and resurrection, witnesses of our faith in him, witnesses. For us, the first part of being a witness, really for everybody, is to see something. So when the angel says, come and see, are we, are we coming and seeing? Are we taking the time to hear God's word, to read God's word, to study God's word, to come and see what God has done for us? Come and see everything that Jesus has done through the word that has been fulfilled. To come and see all the promises and the gift of our salvation fulfilled. Are we? Are we coming to God's house? Are we listening to the word? Are we allowing fear to still distance us? Are we allowing fear to separate us from God's house? Are we allowing fear to take us out of what God has planned for us, what God desires of us? See, God wants us here. God wants us here to hear his word. God wants us here to hear the message of salvation. God wants us here so that we can be his witnesses. God wants us here to feed our faith with word and sacrament so that now we can go and tell. That's what the women were told to do. After they were told to come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples. And we're told to do the same. Once we've heard, once we've experienced, once we've witnessed 
what Jesus can do, does, and gives. And he wants us to share that. What would the Easter message be if the women didn't tell anyone? But they were supposed to, and they did. Maybe it was fear that kept the disciples from recognizing, but still the disciples followed up and checked it out for themselves. And that's what our witness will do for others. It may not convince them, it may not dispel their fear, but it will cause them to question and maybe check it out for themselves. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. The first part of faith is moving them to check it out for themselves. And so he calls us not only to witness everything that Jesus has done for us, but to go and tell. Now, notice the women didn't say, well, what will we say? How will we express that? They just told what they heard and saw. And so it is with us. The Holy Spirit will guide us to tell what we have heard and what we have seen. And then we can be the witnesses he's called us to be and share the good news of a Savior died and risen again that we may have life in his name. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes. Go and tell the good news. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray that as you have filled us with your Holy Spirit, help us to go and tell the good news. But first, help us to come into your house to see your word, to hear your word, to have your word work in us true and sincere faith. And as we experience all the joys of what comes by the power of your word, may we in that joy go and tell. Go and tell anyone around us what we have heard, what we have seen, what we have experienced by being disciples of our Savior, Jesus Christ, of his death and his resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Blessings all, and have a blessed weekend, and uh, we will see you again on Monday.